This week, we're pulling out the fourth blade of the Swiss Army knife of cast-on techniques, the crochet cast-on. We'll be using it this time to create a tubular cast-on. As always, if you'd like to jump directly to a specific point in the video, there are links down in, in the description. A tubular cast-on creates an edgeless edge to fabric. And what I mean by that is that rather than creating an edge that is distinctly different from the stitches that lie above it, the stitches wrap around one face of the fabric around the edge to the other face continuously without interruption. Machine knit items typically use a tubular cast on. It's ideally suited for knit one, purl one fabrics. It's reversible and there is a bind off that matches it. Now there are a lot of different techniques that can create a tubular cast on. What I like about this one is that it starts with a technique I'm familiar with, the crochet cast on, and then it modifies it in the same way that I modified it to create the pinhole cast on that I showed you two weeks ago and the provisional cast on method I showed you last week. So I get this repetition of using the same technique in a variety of situations. I like that much better than having to use a unique technique in each of these situations. Um, this tubular cast on allows you to use waist yarn or you can use a long tail of your project yarn to start it. You can cast on over an even number of stitches or an odd number of stitches. You can work the fabric flat or in the round. I'll be demonstrating using waist yarn over an even number of stitches working flat. Now, if you don't already know how to use the crochet cast on to create live loops on a knitting needle, I suggest that you watch the first video in this series, which you can link to at the top there. And then once you get a handle on that, you'll be ready to learn the tubular cast on. Let's get started. You are going to need your project yarn, your project needles, a circular needle or double pointed needles that are a couple of sizes smaller than your project needles, and a crochet hook that's about the same size as this smaller needle. If you plan to cast on using your project yarn, you will need a locking stitch marker. So I'm using a smooth, uh, solid color cotton yarn for my waist yarn. I'm going to start with a slip knot. If you are using your project yarn, you will need to measure out a tail long enough to crochet cast on half the total number of required stitches. And you'll put your slip knot there and you will use the tail to cast on your stitches. If you are just using waist yarn, you'll do a normal tail and you will use the regular yarn the working yarn to do your cast on. You need to crochet cast on half of your total number of required stitches. If you need an odd number of stitches, round up by one. So I need 20 stitches, so I'm going to cast on 10. If I needed 21, I would round up from 10 and a half to 11. I have my 10 stitches and so now I'm just going to create a crochet chain of a few stitches to end up here. I'm going to enlarge this last loop and then I'm going to cut the yarn. So I have a chain at one end and I have my starting tail at the other. If you were using a project yarn, this would be the working end of the yarn. You need to slide the stitches to the other end of your needle. At this point, if you were using the project yarn, you would need to attach a locking stitch marker to the yarn right there. If you're using waste yarn like this, then you need to attach your project yarn to that. I use, you can either just tie a half knot around or I like to also do a slip knot, just form a slip knot, pull that tail through it like this, then I can tighten up my slip knot and then slide it up to the needle. And this provides some tension on this yarn because we're going to be starting with a yarn over. So you need to have the tail anchored. So we're now going, we cast on half of the number of stitches we needed. So now we're going to double till we get up to the correct number. If you need, um, or almost double if you need an odd number. 
you're going to work a yarn over, knit one all the way across for an even number of stitches. For an odd number of stitches, you will start with a knit one and then alternate yarn over, knit one. So if you are using your right hand to tension the yarn, you bring your needle under in order to create that initial yarn over before you enter the stitch. I hold the yarn in my left hand, so I bring the needle under the yarn, put my finger on it to anchor it so that I can swing around and then enter that first stitch. So we do yarn over, knit one, all the way across. So now you should have the total number of required stitches on the needle. Now for the provisional cast on and pinhole cast on, this was the point where the cast on was complete. But for the tubular cast on, we still have a couple of steps left. When we look at what we have on the needle right now, the yellow waist yarn creates little blips that look like pearl bumps all the way across. And those are the stitches that were knit on the reverse side. The other stitches were the ones that were created with the yarn over. What we're going to do now is use a technique called double knitting to create the actual tubular cast on. And we're going to do this by alternating slipping a stitch with knitting a stitch. And we're going to be doing it in a very specific way. So to establish this, we can use these little color blips that look like pearl bumps as guidelines. So on this first row, anything that looks, we have the yarn in front, anything that looks like a pearl bump is going to be, that stitch is going to be slipped. The yarn is in front as if you're purling and you're slipping as if to purl, but you're not actually purling. Then you're going to move the yarn in the back because you're going to be knitting the stitch. So you're gonna keep alternating slipping a stitch with the yarn in front, and then knitting a stitch. Slipping a stitch, knitting a stitch. And again, you have to make sure that the yarn is in front while you're slipping. And then we're going to be knitting this last stitch right here. So now we have worked all the way across from where this chain is, all the way across. Now we turn the work and we're going to do the same thing on the reverse side. We're going to be doing, we have an even number of stitches, so both rows will be worked exactly the same. If you had an odd number of stitches, you would be starting and ending with a slip stitch in that first row, and then you'd be starting and ending with a knit stitch on this row. So, but we have an even number of stitches. So again, we don't have the blips, but we do have what looks like little pearl bumps to guide us. So we're going to slip anything that looks like a pearl and knit anything that looks like a knit. So now we're back at this chain edge. So we've done all the way across and all the way back. So every stitch has been knit once and slipped once. Now we're going to repeat this one more time. We're gonna go all the way across and all the way back. And you can always tell if you've completed the whole sequence if you are back at the chain. Okay, so now I've completed my four rows, so two passes on each side of the fabric. And you can see, because I've only worked each stitch uh, two times and I've slipped them twice, it looks like I have two rows of knits below the needle. Now, if you're working in the round, this is the point where you can join in the round after you've completed that final row, then you can join uh, to the other end if you want. If you're working flat, you'll turn the work like this. So here I have a stitch that looks like a pearl, so I'm actually going to purl it. I have a knit, so I'm going to knit it. Pearl, knit, pearl, knit.
Now at this point, I want to explain why this is called the tubular cast on and what was going on when we were doing the slipping and knitting, what I called double knitting. So if I take these stitches off the needle, the stitches will always want to come lean toward whatever the knit side is. So these are knit stitches, so they want to go this way and the other ones want to go the other way. But if you look, these stitches are not interconnected. What we have here are two pieces, a double, double sided piece of stockinette. So we have knit stitches on this side and knit stitches on this other side. So what we had started with were two pieces of stockinette fabric, one facing that way and one facing this way. And they were separate, they were not connected. And now that we're working in the knit one purl one ribbing, we're interlocking them together and that's what creates the tube. And that's where the tubular cast on gets its name. Okay, so at this point, I have completely worked across one full row, so the tubular cast on is complete. Uh, now, I can, at any time, I can remove the crochet chain here um, and release the base of the stitches. So you can start pulling on this. It can get a little, tricky to undo the chain the longer it gets. This one seems to be cooperating uh, remarkably well. And then when you get to the, the point here where the yarn is attached, you can just pull. You can pull the waist yarn out of that slip knot that we had created, and you can just pull that, and then there's no knot in there. So at this point, you can see how the tubular, the tube was created around this string of waist yarn and we can just remove it now. We'll just pull it out and it's done. So here, you can, so now you can see how the stitches just roll around from one side of the fabric to the other. So that's a wrap on this Swiss Army Knife series of videos using the crochet cast on. To see the playlist of all of the videos in the series, you can link up here to my left and you can click on my face up here to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions about videos you'd like to see in the future, you can make those down in the comments below or you can join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. And there's a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching.